In today's video, I wanted to talk about a tip in terms of staying organized when you're working with uh, things like Impact XT, where you can have multiple different output channels in your console, but you're sequencing on one track. So as you may or may not know, Studio One has tracks and channels. They are not by default linked, so we don't have a one-to-one -one parity. I'm talking specifically when we enable multi-outputs. Um, and for some people, that's a good thing. For some people, that's a bad thing. And for some people, doesn't really matter. For me, we can be friends regardless of how you want to work. It doesn't really matter. But one thing I really do like is if I'm starting production and I've loaded a kit or a preset or I'm building my own kit, I love the flexibility of being able to have one track over here. Let me just change my view. So we have one track, we have one channel. Now, sometimes if I need to maybe dial something in really quickly, I might end up putting something directly on this channel just to kind of get my drums in line if I need them to hit louder, have some compression in EQ. But what I usually end up doing the moment I have a second, sometimes the singer uh, will go, go out to drive to pick up some lunch or something. The minute I have a second, what I usually end up doing, once they're kind of finalized and I've pre-mixed the levels using the gain options on these individual pads, we can adjust the gain and the panning, is that as soon as that's done, I will start to enable things. So in terms of the multi out. So let's do that now. We've got a really simple pattern, kick, snare, rim shot, clap. We have hi-hats and we have toms. Okay, let's allow all of these elements over here to have their own channel in the console. And then the toms, let's make sure that those are all on one stereo channel. So we will allow those all three of those pads to come out of the same channel. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, super simple, and I'm sure you've all seen this before. I'm just going to these individual pads and we're enabling a new output. And as I enable new outputs, we have a new channel that pops up. So this will be stereo five. Now the toms, here's a little tip for you. If you ever wanna select a pad, but you don't necessarily wanna hear the sound. So this is sometimes when you have something on loop and you're just trying to kind of premix things, but you don't wanna trigger things. Um, if you select at the very bottom, in between this little blank space here, you can actually select the pad and all of its controls without triggering the sound, so to speak. So I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna select these and all three of these are gonna go out stereo six. So now we have the exact situation I was talking about. We have these drums and they're all coming out of their individual channels. Now, if we solo from the console, if we solo from the console, I can solo these individual channels and we can hear things. This is obviously different. Um, this is different than if we solo from within the editor or if we solo from within the GUI. The channel is in terms of how they're routed to Studio One. Okay, so now that we have that set up, if you wanted that same control where you have your drums, you have access to the individual channels so you can apply different plugins on each one of these elements individually. It's super easy to select all of these and we can create a bus channel. Now we can adjust the level and we can also adjust anything in terms of EQ compression or anything like that that we want. But let's talk about another way. I'm going to remove this channel for a second. One really um, nice thing that I like, and it, it took me a bit of getting used to, but I love folder tracks and linking them to either a bus channel or a VCA channel. And it can be either one, depending on how you want to work. But for that, people usually think about different tracks and then having all those tracks together. Like maybe it's all of your keyboards or guitars or things like that. But we can actually pack a folder with just one track. Now, when we pack a folder, um, watch what happens. I'm gonna right click the track header and I'm just gonna choose the pack folder options. Now, the minute we pack a folder, because of the way my console options are, we don't see anything here, but let's open up the folder for a moment. And you can see that my individual channels from channel one all the way through to channel six, they're kind of showing and hiding based upon that. Now, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to link this to a bus channel because I wanna have that folder that's linked to a bus channel. So if you have your track height high enough in terms of its vertical zoom, you'll see this little drop down menu. We have the option to add a bus channel. So let's do that. And also one other thing to point out is that same option, as long as you have the inspector open, that same option is available over here in this drop down menu. So we were going to add a bus channel. Now I'm going to name this drums. So now what we have is we have our bus channel where we can either adjust the level over here 
or we can apply some plugins on that, sends if we wanted to, a splitter, anything we really want to. So we have that one channel control of our drums as a group, as a whole, if you will. But if I open up the folder, we have the option to premix these, add plugins, add sends, sidechain, anything that you need to do. The other cool thing is that if you're an Atom or an Atom SQ user, that it still works perfectly fine when this is in a folder. If I record enable this track, I have access to my pattern part over here in the editor from the actual SQ. So that works really, really nice and I can continue to work that way. And this is just, I think, a nice way to keep the housekeeping in order. Because as much as I love having control over this, I don't necessarily need to see that. Maybe I'm working with a bunch of vocal tracks or a bunch of other uh, tracks or stems or something like that. And I just want to keep my drums to one channel or one track where it's easy for me visually and um, just from an organization standpoint, it seems to work out pretty well. And we still have all the control that we have. Now, one thing that I will point out is you wanna make sure you open up your console options. And in order for this workflow to kind of work, you need to make sure you have link visibility of track list and console and link expansion and visibility of folder tracks. Now, when we talk about integration with Personas hardware, we're really only talking about um, Impact XT at this point in terms of the editor functioning the same way and everything like that. But it's also for third party stuff, you know, it's useful if you wanted to just have a way to basically give yourself that one fader type workflow where we can adjust things, but having that flexibility to kind of spill the contents of this folder linked to a bus channel as needed. Anyways, that's it for me. I hope you got something from this and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.